uh, the outline here. First interpretation, I just interpret the passage, and then example that there are Christians after they converted, they still live in sin. They lived in sin before they were saved, but after they were saved, they still live in sin and let, and let sin control them. And there are Christians who really live a holy life. But it's true that those who live a holy life are the minority. The majority of Christians are controlled by sin to a certain extent and giving the devil a foothold and are letting uh, Satan continue to influence them and control them. So God's nature and grace. Now there are two parts, the, the law part and the grace part. The law part is that God is holy. He sees our sin. He searches the heart of all men. When he sees a person is filled with sins, he is living in sin, God is not happy with the person. Now, at the same time God loves the person, at the same time God has wrath on this person. God loves this person and wants that person forgiven and saved. But at the same time God sees his sin and God is angry with him, especially like a pastor as someone serving God. God sees the sins and God is angry with him because he is preaching the truth at the same time he is committing sin. He is letting the devil control him. So God has his holiness and when people sin, continue to sin, then he's a child of wrath and God will punish him, discipline him and if a person totally have no faith in God, he can lose salvation altogether. Now the positive side, the great side, that God is full of love. He loves all people. He not understand people are controlled by sin. He wants to save us. So He gives us life while we were dead in sin. When, we, when the Holy Spirit speaks to us through the Word of God, when people preach to us, preach the gospel to us, and then it changes our life, and then we are changed. So God changes our life. And God continues to motivate us. When we respond to God, then God will work in our life to give us a new life. So that is the grace of God, to motivate us not to sin, to motivate us to obey God and, and serve God and love God and live a holy life. So that is the grace of God. That will, God will continue to speak to us. There is a continual struggle that God continues to speak to us. But as a Christian, he who chooses to obey God all the time, then he will get used to saying no to sins very quickly. He will get used to responding to the Holy Spirit positively, very quickly. Immediately, he will obey the Holy Spirit and he will say no to the sin. So that is the work of God. And God will be pleased with this person and God will reward this person. Okay, and then why do Christians uh, they don't live out God's nature of holiness because they think that they can uh, run away from God. They can wait until they die and then they repent of all the sin. Or they believe that when they repent, then all the sins are covered so uh, there's no consequence of sin. They didn't realize the destructiveness of sin. Sins are destructive. When a person lives in sin, it will destroy his life. So the fruit of the flesh when we reap to the flesh, we we'll reap, we sow to the flesh, we we'll reap destruction. So he did not, he's not aware of that. So the reminder and warning, when a person continues sin, then he's under the wrath of God. God is angry with him and God wants to discipline him and punish him. And the worst scenario is if he totally loses faith, then he can lose salvation. And that is serious warning. And then how? How is that? We are, aware, we are aware that Satan is working all the time. The evil spirit is working all the time. Our sinful nature is working all the time. Our sinful nature is causing us to have sins. Our sinful nature is causing us to disobey God, to fall into sin, to, to uh, uh, obey our sinful nature, to uh, listen to the devil. So the sinful nature is causing us to do all these things. <clears throat> And so when we are aware of that, then we learn to be aware of the sinful nature. We want learn to be aware of the voice inside our heart. 
the voice could come from a sinful nature and could come from our, uh, you know, it could come from the devil. The devil can speak to us. So we become aware of that. And then we also become aware of the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is teaching us to obey, teaching us to serve Him and love Him. And we know that this is, uh, you know, we want to listen to the voice of God. When we listen to the voice of God, then we'll have blessings. So we respond to God. So we learn to be aware of the voice inside. And then we use the five steps to victory. We're aware and we know that the sins are destructive. And then what does the Bible tell us to do? To obey God, to live a holy life, to say no to Satan. And then four, to pray for forgiveness and strength. And then I choose to obey. I choose to think about the goodness of God. And so we think about the goodness of God. He's working my life. So this is to think about the grace of God. He is working in my life all the time. He is moving in my heart all the time. He is working in my life all the time. He is loving me all the time. So when I obey Him, He's very, very happy. He's very happy he, and He wants to bless me. Therefore, whenever I respond to Him, obey Him, He's very happy and I can be very happy. I can thank God for that. So then I will say no to the work of Satan that I'm aware, yes, Christians can be affected by the evil spirit, that we say no to Satan, we say no to the sins, because when we were non-Christians, we were influenced by the evil spirit all the time. And now we want to reduce the influence of the evil spirit. The more we trust in God, the more we have the presence of God. When we think about God all day long, we worship God and love God all day long, then we'll have the presence of God all the time then we have the presence of God all the time. We have the love of God. We have the joy of the Lord. We have the strength of the Lord. We have His presence. We have His motivation. Then we will continue to be blessed by God. So this passage, uh, which has law and also grace, the law is that, you know, before we were saved, we were under the power of the evil spirit. And then, when we are saved, it's God who gives us new life. So we are saved by grace through faith. And also, this passage doesn't talk about that God continues to work in my life, to change my life. Now this works for all teaching about Christian life. There is always a part of God working in my heart to help me to obey God, help me to submit to God, to say no to sins, and to serve God, and to be uh, to delight in God. And also, we can... Thank God that I am responding to God, I'm obeying God, and God is very happy. So we can say that, oh, God is very happy with me now when I submit to God and obey God. So I can rejoice in God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm trusting in God now. I'm obeying God now. Thank you, Lord. You're working my life. So we look at the work of God. So as Christians, we always want to be sensitive to the work of the Holy Spirit all the time. He's working my life. He's touching my heart. He's changing my heart. Thank God, thank God, thank God. We are not far from God. He is with me all the time. And whenever I obey Him, He is very, very happy. God is very happy and God will bless me. And God will give me strength and God will remember all the good things I've done and God will reward me. Okay, so that's the, the how. And then challenge is to say to people, be aware of the work of Satan. Be aware of the sinful nature. Be aware of the sinful voice inside of us. And be aware of the voice of the Holy Spirit. So can today, can you be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit and respond to God and say no to the voice of the evil spirit and the voice of our sinful nature and obey God and then God is very happy and God will bless our whole life. And our whole life will be blessed by God. So I hope you all learn to study the Bible. We all learn to, uh, to submit to, the, to uh, study the Bible, pay attention to the Bible, and love God, and obey God, and say no to sins, and be aware of uh, God's work, and appreciate God's work. So we preach, we always talk about the work of God in our heart, how God is speaking to us, how God is guiding us, how God is changing us, and giving us joy, and strength, and and motivation and God give us opportunity to serve Him. So all these are good gifts, are good things from God and I thank God for all the good things He has done 
for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm thankful to you. I'm a, I, I'm, I appreciate you and I want to obey you all the time. So I hope that we all will say yes to God and love God and obey Him all the time and say no to the voice of Satan and our sinful nature. So I just show you that in any passage, whether it talks about God's grace or God's law, we can always look at the law and the grace. Each passage should have the law and the grace, and the grace should be the main part of the passage, uh, of the message. And then it still have uh, the, the law to remind us not to sin. But as Christians, we should help you know, all the members of our church to be aware of God's presence, God's work in our life. God is changing us. God is speaking to us. God is changing our life. So we are aware of that. And we are also aware of the voice of Satan and our sinful nature fighting against God. And we want to say no to the sinful nature, say no to the sinful thoughts. And we want to say yes to God and always remember that whenever we obey Him, God is very happy and we can be happy and we can rejoice in God. And we can enjoy God. We can say, God, I enjoy you. I, I, I obey you. I feel joyful. I enjoy you. I remember how you work in my life to change me. I'm very, very thankful. And I want to submit to you all days, all the days of my life. So I hope that you all, when you see this teaching of motivation with, by God's grace, together with a reminder from the law, you can see how we all can be motivated by God's grace and to be reminded by the law not to uh, sin and to obey God and to serve God and to love God with joy, that we can enjoy life every day. You know, remember, we tell ourselves, I can rejoice in God, I can enjoy God because I'm following God, I'm responding to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is guiding me. I thank God for that. God is so wonderful. I submit to God. I obey God. I, I enjoy God. I enjoy loving God I, and I enjoy, enjoy obeying God. So I hope that we all can live under the grace of God, understand this teaching. Now for many people, they would just teach and say, well, God will punish you. You're under the wrath of God and just obey. You know, it's just saying, you're bad, and now you obey. It's just the key is obedience only. And I'm telling you, the key is not just obedience. The key is connected to God, counting God's blessings, responding to God's work, and then obeying. So it's not just obedience. But some people think that the, me the message is just telling the sins and then obey. So it's just obedience. It's not just telling people to obey. It's telling people God is a wonderful God. God is working in our lives. God is changing our lives. God is guiding us. God is doing all these wonderful things. God is changing our life. And then when we respond to Him, He's very, very happy. And He'll reward us. He'll give us strength. He'll give us more joy and more opportunity to serve Him. And we can enter God's plan. So God has all this work. And we want to tell people about all this work so that people become aware of God's work. I'm aware of God's work all the time. I'm teaching it and I'm aware of that. God is with me. God is guiding me. I'm, I can enjoy God. I can serve God with gladness. I can obey God with gladness. And God is very happy with that. I can be very happy all day long. Okay, so I hope that you all live like that. Now, if you have any question, you can ask me. I hope that you all are un living under God's grace, that you're enjoying God, that you're serving God, motivated by God's grace. And the law is just a reminder. But for many people, the law is the main motivation. Just obey. That's the law. We're not just obeying. We are appreciating God's grace, His grace of the Holy Spirit working in my life. He's changing my life. He's turning my life around. He's changing my life. He is working in my life. So I appreciate His wonderful work. And I respond to Him. That's obedience. So I appreciate God's grace. I count God's blessing. And I respond to Him and obey Him. And God is very happy. So we want to talk about God's work in our lives all the time. God is 
God's grace in our life. God is changing our life. God is working in my life. So we tell people that and people appreciate that. And then they will respond to God and then they are sure, they will become sure that God is working in their life. God is staying with them. God is guiding them. They are having a living relationship with God. Okay? If you have any questions, you can ask me. Okay? We'll, we'll close the prayer. Please stand up. Enjoy yourself in God. Enjoy God's presence. When you relax and enjoy God, you have more strength. Okay, so you can stand up. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. You're so wonderful. You're full of love and mercy and kindness. It's you who changes us. You give us a new life. You gave, made us alive while we were sinners, while we were dead in sins. You gave us a new life and you gave us the Holy Spirit to work in our heart. Lord, help us to understand that when we obey the Holy Spirit, when we respond to the Holy Spirit, when we appreciate the Holy Spirit, then our life will be changed. When we appreciate God's work, then God will be very happy with us and He'll give us strength and give us renewal and, and a new life. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. You're so good. So I want to obey you all the time. I want to respond to you all the time. I want to appreciate you. Lord, help us to appreciate your work. You save us. You continue to work in our life. You change our life. You guide us. You give us strength. You appreciate what we do for you. You reward us for what we do for you. So everything you do is wonderful. Please help us to enjoy you. We enjoy you. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. We enjoy you. Lord, you are so wonderful. You are so wonderful. We enjoy you all the time. You are a wonderful God. You are a loving God. You are with us all the time. You, you are a kind God. You are a God who works with us all the time. So, Lord, help us not to say that our Christian life is just obedience. Our Christian life is being, is being connected to you, responding to your grace, responding to your work in your life. You are working in my life all the time. I enjoy you. I respond to you. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Oh Lord, fill us with the Holy Spirit, fill us with joy, fill us with strength, fill, fill us with power. Fill us with motivation. Lord, you have given us a wonderful plan. You want to do great things in our life. Our, li our life can go higher and higher. Our life can be, become, a, we can become a great person. Our life will become uh, pleasing to you, that you'll be pleased with our life. Lord, help us to enjoy you. We enjoy you. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. We enjoy you. God, we enjoy you. Please heal our hearts so that we are not living under the law. We are living under grace, even though we are reminded by the law. But we are mainly motivated by God's grace. We are enjoying God's presence. We are enjoying God's peace with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, you're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. We like you. We enjoy you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We just enjoy you. And we can be happy because we are following you. We are obeying you. We can be happy. We can tell ourselves when we obey you, you are very happy with us and you reward us and you strengthen us and you provide for us. Lord, help us and bless our country. Bless the country of all the pastors here, uh, all the Christians here, that you bless the country so that the country is blessed by God. Oh Lord, come and bless us in a time of persecution. There's a lot of persecution and there are a lot, there are a lot of problems with many places. Many places have a lot of sins and a lot of control by Satan. Lord, help us to not to follow Satan. Help us to obey you and submit to you and say no to Satan. Thank you, Jesus. We can enjoy your work. Enjoy your grace. Live in your grace. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Now, I hope you understand what I teach about the importance of grace that the motivation by grace is not just obedience. It's not just obedience. Uh, recently, one person wrote a, 
assignment is just about obedience. It's not just obedience, it's connection with God. Seeing God's grace, appreciating God's grace. Let God continue to work in our heart. Let God pour His grace in our heart. Let the Holy Spirit change our heart and change our life so that we follow God totally. So God, help us. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Be with us. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.